Hello everyone. Welcome back. I hope everyone's safe. And I hope all those who are overseas are staying safe in this brutal evening of a day and a half of, of it happening all over again. So I wanted to kind of discuss with you this new article that came out by Plus 972 magazine. That's an independent magazine from uh, 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 the Palestine-Israel area. Um, this reporter, his last name is Abraham, uncovered a lot of interesting um, information about how the military uses AI. We turn now to look at a stunning new expose on how Israel's using artificial intelligence to draw up targets and how Israel's loosened its constraints on attacks that could kill civilians. One former intelligence officer says Israel's developed a, quote, mass assassination factory. In one case, sources said the Israeli military approved an assassination strike on a single Hamas commander, despite knowing the strike could kill hundreds of Palestinian civilians. Another source told 972 magazine, quote, nothing happens by accident. When a three-year-old girl is killed in a home in Gaza, it's because someone in the army decided it wasn't a big deal for her to be killed, that it was a price worth paying in order to hit another target. Everything is intentional. We know exactly how much collateral damage there is in every move, unquote. So. That was just the first couple of clips. I went ahead and just put them together. And Amy Goodman was just kind of narrating some of the parts of the article, which, of course, you can just pull up. I pulled it up myself. But um, it's really alarming, um, the policy now that they have. And from what I've understood, this would be uh, just war crimes, um, international war crimes, against humanity. 72 magazine and local call is headlined a mass assassination factory inside Israel's calculated bombing of Gaza. Yuval, thanks for joining us again from Jerusalem. If you can talk about who your sources are and what exactly they're using, the Israeli military is using AI for, explain this idea of a mass assassination factory. Sure. Yeah. So I'll start by saying, uh, Amy, that that you know there are some things that I can say and other things that I cannot say. You know, we as Israeli journalists are subjected to the military censor. So so everything that I have published had to be vetted by the military. So 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 and I also my knowledge is partial. So I've spoken to seven Israeli intelligence officers, some of them current, some of them former intelligence officers. All of them took part in wars against Gaza in bombing campaigns whether right now or in 2021, 2022, and 2014, and um, to mark targets in Gaza. And I think a good year to, to, to look at, to understand its beginning with relation to Gaza is 2019, when um, the chief of staff, Aviv Kohavi, uh, introduced this new division in the military called the Targets Division. And its idea was to bring together hundreds of soldiers and basically start to develop these AI algorithms and automated software to accelerate the target creation for, for strikes with life and death consequences in Gaza. And, and you know, a source that actually took part in, 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 in this division center said that they were being judged not by the quality of the targets that they were producing, but by the quantity that the idea. So you've heard it all. You know, I, I just can't believe this is even allowed. Uh, to me, it just might as well just go ahead and just chunk ancient, ancient orange from Vietnam all over everybody. Government, the U.S. government, I know has full knowledge of what Israel can do because they're a partner. And this is one thing I wanted to go ahead and just kind of let you guys understand. It's not just us giving them. Uh, military equipment and money. Israel hands over to the U.S. over close over to three hundred, maybe two hundred and fifty to three hundred million dollars worth of military technology and equipment to the U.S. They actually sell to us for what they develop with the money we give them. So it's just like a nice symbiotic way for two warmongering countries 
to be able to do whatever the fuck they want. Um, there's no other way to, to describe it. So. All right. So, so, so the source said that uh, this shock effect is the way Israel views uh, its, its war tactic against these organizations. And part of that is trying to accelerate the creation of targets. Now, in 2014, which was the previous biggest uh, Israeli assault on Gaza, According to sources that I've spoken with, the Israeli military ran out of targets after roughly three weeks. And that operation lasted for 50 days. And sources have described a sense that in previous operations that the military just runs out of targets to bomb. And alongside that, there is some political pressure or some need to continue the war, to, to, to create a victory image for the Israeli public, uh, uh, um, to, to work, you know, to, to apply more pressure. And I think this increasing use of artificial intelligence, this acceleration of target creation, in part is a response to that problem. To run so there you have it. It just doesn't matter to them. You know, if they could just get one target, they'll, they'll wipe out hundreds of people along the way. <clears throat> Civilian targets, including private homes, uh, public buildings, uh, infrastructure, are referred to as power targets? Sure. Yes. So power targets is a concept that was developed according to intelligence sources in the military first in 2014. And the military defines power targets as residential high-rise buildings. So they have eight floors, 12 floors, 14 floors. And the official military's claim is that in each of these buildings there is a military target that merits, that legitimizes bombing down the entire building. However, according to three sources in Israeli intelligence that I've spoken with who have a deep knowledge of this tactic, who, who have been involved with bombing power targets, they say that the idea of power targets is to purposely attack buildings that have all of these civilian apartments in them in order to put pressure on Palestinian civilian society in Gaza, which is then translated to pressure on Hamas, civilian pressure on Hamas. I've heard this term several times in my conversations with intelligence sources. Now the U.S. recently has tried to, has said, uh, I'm not sure if I can really believe them, that um, they're trying to persuade Israel to tone it down. Secretary of State Antony Blinken speaking Thursday at a news conference in Tel Aviv. Israel has the most sophisticated, one of the most sophisticated militaries in the world. It is capable of neutralizing the threat posed by Hamas while minimizing harm to innocent men, women, and children. And it has an obligation to do so. The way Israel defends itself matters. It's imperative that Israel act in accordance with international humanitarian law and the laws of war. One of your sources suggested that the scale of this attack, with an unprecedented number of civilian casualties in Gaza, has to do in part with the Israeli military's wish to redeem itself after the catastrophic failures of October 7th. And now you have this big New York Times expose that Israel clearly knew a year ago the blueprint for this attack. And there are other reports in Haaretz and other places that say, I think they were called the women surveillance soldiers uh, along the Gaza border. Um, I think they're called spotters were repeatedly telling their supervisors in the last weeks, in the last months, we see this escalation here. It looks like Hamas is about to attack. And they would be told they'd be brought up on insubordination charges if they kept pushing this issue. So there you have it. It's a big baby crying because it wasn't awake and doing what it was supposed to be doing. So be safe. And I hope everyone stays well. Thank you.